My name is Diane Ravish. I am Research Professor of Education at New York University, and I'm a historian of education. Uh, over the years in which I've been active in this field, which are 40 some odd years, uh, I have gone from being uh, a proponent of choice and testing to being a very outspoken critic. I would like to think that I've learned a lot over these years. Uh, I'm very concerned about the attacks on public education, I'm very concerned about the attacks on the teaching profession, and I'm very concerned about the proliferation of high-stakes testing. Uh, in my books, my last two books, I try to explain why these things are harmful to education, harmful to children, and harmful to our future as a society. Uh, there is a fairly small but incredibly powerful and wealthy group of people in this country who believe that the free market holds the answer to all problems and they don't believe in public education. Uh, they don't believe in the government having much to do with anything, I think. Uh, they believe that the free market is the answer, and so they are promoting, in state after state, um, charter schools, vouchers. We now have more schools, more states, allowing public money to flow to religious institutions than ever in our history, except for maybe the first few years of our history. Uh, before we established the idea that there must be a separation of, between church and state. So we have about 20, almost half our states allowing public money to, fly, to flow to religious institutions. And uh, there are now a great many states, almost every state, uh, who have uh, authorized charter schools. And charter schools, some charter schools are good, some charter schools are terrible. On average, they don't have higher test scores or higher performance than public schools, and yet we are developing two sectors of American education, the public sector and the privately managed and religious sector. I, I don't happen to think this is very good for a democracy. I believe in public education. Uh, I think that the public has a responsibility to support public schools uh, and to allow teachers to do their work without interference from legislators and governors who don't know how to teach. Uh, so I've spent a great deal of time these past few years uh, trying to encourage parents, encourage teachers, and to uh, encourage people to defend public education and to recognize that the entire community has a responsibility to support public schools, uh, even if they don't have children, uh, and to try to ward off this relentless attack that we see from big corporations, from a group like ALEC, from um, the big philanthropists uh, like the Gates Foundation, the Walton Foundation, uh, the Broad Foundation, and many more. And uh, they're collaborating with the U.S. Department of Education these past several years and promoting uh, charters as an alternative to public schools and also uh, standing by uh, either helping the, the passage of voucher legislation or standing by silently. Uh, so I think that the future of public education is at risk, and for those who say the market knows best, I would say that by now there is quite a lot of experience with vouchers and charters, and we know that uh, on average uh, they actually underperform public schools. So I don't exactly understand what the case is for consumer choice. I think the nefarious effect of consumer choice is that it, it encourages people to think as consumers and not as citizens. Uh, if we think as citizens, then we understand that we need to have a vibrant public school system uh, because that's where most of our children go to school and will always go to school. And it should not be a dumping ground for the charters that uh, have pushed out kids they don't want. So uh, that's been what I've been working on very hard these past years, a few years, and also working on uh, trying to stop the attacks on teachers. And I think that what's behind the attacks on teachers is an effort to uh, undermine the teaching profession and to turn it into a job that people can get with little, uh, with no credentials uh, and to replace teachers with technology. I'm a great fan of technology. I use technology. I tweet. I blog. Uh, but I don't think that technology will ever replace uh, the, the touch and the smile and the um, presence of a teacher. So I want to uh, I urge my fellow citizens to do the right thing. I mean, if we look at the top performing countries in the world, 
Uh, they do not have charters. They do not have vouchers. They have not uh, launched a campaign to make teaching into a, an insecure and um, temp profession. Uh, so I think that we have to uh, stand by our ideals, stand by our ethics, uh, and believe that the way to improve education is first of all to uh, respect the professionals who do it, uh, to reduce class sizes, to value the arts. I think there should be the arts in every school. Every school should have a full and rich curriculum. We should diminish the role of high stakes testing. I'd like to see far less use of standardized testing in our schools and uh, revive the practice that the tests that matter most are the tests that teachers write and, and give to their students. Uh, and also value the importance of play, which is tremendously important for young children, but also for uh, children and, and even and adults as well. Uh, I, but if the, we really, truly want to improve education, uh, we must reduce poverty, because the source of low test scores is poverty. Uh, so that's a big bill. Uh, that's, a, that's a lot of things that we need to do. Uh, but I think that to really improve our society, we must reduce the income gap, the inequality. We must reduce the inequality gap uh, in terms of income and wealth, and the uh, achievement gaps will diminish at the same time. Thank you.